Okay. Yes, Hannah, what's your question? Um, so when we were in two and we learned about, you know, secondary dominance and then forward modulation into a, like a new key, we had like uh, Dr. Myers always said there had to be like a common chord before you can modulate it. So I was wondering if you could also arguably say that the sig like stay within C after bar seventeen and then say that's a six and then say that the six is the common chord leading into the modulation in bar nineteen. You could certainly say that. Um don't basically I'm saying there's a common chord and the common chord is the, the E seven chord. Mm -hmm. Five of six in one and five of two in the other. Yeah. The reason I like, well. I don't know. He just, like, I don't know. I feel like the common chord was a lot more limited than ha that, like, being since it's a five, seven, up six, being a modulated chord. Not modulated, like. There's, this is one of the gray areas. Different analysts would choose different places for the modulation. Got you. I'm trying to get my. I'm not saying that's wrong. You could, if you did it on a test, I would think it was right. Okay. Um, I think this is a slightly better answer because of that quarter note. As soon as I hear or that quarter rest in the previ previous line, that quarter rest at the end of or the middle of bar 16, to me, that quarter rest is like such a dividing line. It's a beat of silence right. in an otherwise non silent piece. Because couldn't you also consider this almost a half cadence since it kind of ends right there and then it starts into that E? Um, you're kind of having a, five, a cade, half cadence because that five chord, the next chord, the next real chord you get is six mm -hmm. in the key of C. So it's five to six. That is kind of a half cadence. But then that six chord is also a two, five, one in the new key. So these, when I say we're, we have these gray areas, this is what I'm talking about. You could choose, you could make an argument for like three different places of where the technical common chord is. By the way, you don't always have to have a common chord. There are other ways to do this too. Um, but right now we're using common chord. Most of what we're going to find is going to be common chord. Uh, most of what is is common chord, but there are other ways to do it too. Um, I like changing here because as soon as I hear that quarter rest, there's a whole beat of silence. And then I get two souls, like isolated soul up in that melody, setting up something new. And then I get a chord that doesn't belong in the old key. Right at that point, as soon as I hear a chord that doesn't belong in the old key at all, I'm thinking something's moved. And then when I find it points to a 251, to me, that's a good place to call it. If you wanted to say this is a an alighted half cadence or something like that, or an alighted deceptive cadence. Alighted means it's across two phrases. So then you get a five chord, you're moving to a six, and you get a decorative chord on that six in between. And then you want to say that six is where you pivot. That's a perfectly fair argument. Uh, I think mine's 2% better. <laughs> but, but I would give you full credit for that on a test. No problem. As this process... What we've done in the last week of like doing this on a few simple songs and then applying it to the Mozart, do you feel confident enough to go and, and do this over the weekend? It's going to take some time, I know. You're going to make mistakes, I don't care. But what I'm trying to show you is if you come in next Monday having fought with all the demons that you have on page two and, and coming to a conclusion where I think this is the answer, then when we come into class, we're going to talk, we're going to do exactly what we just did here on Monday, except instead of you just discovering everything that I give you, you've already fought with it. You have, you understand the questions and then you're going to get the answers and it's going to illuminate a lot of things that you uh, right now are confused by. This should be your model from this point forward in the class. We're going to be doing this kind of analysis pretty much uh, like a page a day or a page a class or something. And you should be trying to come in with that same level of having wrestled with the problems before we stop the class. Then that's the best way to learn. You already understand the problems. You know what you know. You know what you don't know. Then when you get the answer, it, puts, it connects things in your brain 
that's the best way to learn this this esoteric analysis stuff, in my opinion. I have no concept of time right now for where we are. Um, 235.